Thank you, Madam President. I've introduced this resolution recognizing Gun Violence Awareness Month every year now for six years. In my first four years, the majority wouldn't even allow the resolution to come up for a vote. And I know how many thousands of residents were at their wit's end that not only was this legislature refusing to take any action to reduce gun violence, but that the majority wouldn't even dare to recognize Gun Violence Awareness Month. Just because the majority then refused to recognize gun violence didn't mean it wasn't happening and growing. In 2020, gun violence surpassed motor vehicle crashes to become the leading cause of death for children. And firearm deaths among adolescents jumped nearly 30 percent between 2019 and 2020 alone. Now much has changed in the past two years. Now our state has enacted broadly popular, effective gun violence prevention laws. My own bill, the lead bill to create our state's extreme risk protection order, was my first bill ever signed into law as a legislator. It took five years and many more led by legislators before me. Quoting from a Bridge Magazine article in March about the effect of the extreme risk protection order law, they noted that the legislation had been used dozens of times. It was used with a Battle Creek man diagnosed with bipolar disorder, off medication, and threatening his wife in a murder-suicide. A 27-year-old voicing suicidal ideas in the midst of divorce proceedings, his wife concerned that he would actually follow through. An elementary school student who had access to his parents' guns and threatened to shoot classmates. Just this week, I attended a community conversation on gun safety at Royal Oak United Methodist Church. The event was organized by a Clawson teacher who somberly opened the event with the revelation that she herself had lost three of her students to gun violence. One, a boy who died by suicide who had access to his parents' unsecured gun. Two, a 15-year-old girl named Kaylin who was shot and killed by her stepfather. He and her mom were going through a divorce. He was drunk. He killed Kaylin's mom, Kaylin, and then himself. And three, Alexandria Verner, the Clawson native who was shot and killed in the mass shooting at Michigan State. To put this into context, Clawson is a city with a population of only 11,000 people. It is a little city with a big heart, and far too often that heart is hurting. Alex's parents, Ted and Nancy, spoke of their daughter they said, we always knew she would change the world. We never imagined that it would be like this. Al could have gone anywhere, they said, but she chose MSU because of their forensics program. Just 48 hours before she was killed, she was at home telling her parents how happy she was at state. Another parent at the event this week brought up the issue of how to have the hard conversation with other parents about whether or not they have guns in their home and how their guns are secured. Chief Mike Moore of the Royal Oak Police Department shared that as a police officer and the father of young daughters, he knows that this can be a difficult conversation. And because of that, he said he leads those conversations to give other parents permission to participate. He acknowledges that as part of his job, he of course has firearms, but he walks the other parents through in detail how those firearms are secured in their home so that other parents can be assured that their kids are safe to come over. This year, in recognition of Gun Violence Awareness Month, let's all normalize these conversations. Too many kids have died senselessly because of unsecured guns. These are deaths that we can prevent. Safe storage is the law now in Michigan, but it's on us to ensure that we don't wait for tragedy to strike to ask. Ted Verner said to the group this week, don't be afraid to be that nerdy dad. Just ask. Do whatever you can to protect your kids. Ted also told us of the amount of time that he's been spending in Lansing meeting with legislators and saying that when he meets with legislators and elected leaders, he's often sitting on the other side of the table. He said, one day you will find yourself on this side of the table. It will affect you. Thank you, and I'd like my remarks printed in the journal.